It was good. It's your boy, Mr. Wonka7, here with a Q&A session for the very next day after my previous Q&A session. This will be for July the 18th. And I got some good questions on the comments of my previous video. So let me get things started. Shout out to Trench Gun. Shout out to Veros for the previous set of questions. And let's get it popping right now. Now, what are your favorite anime slash video games? Now, my favorite anime, I'm going to put a top three list. Number one would be... Naoki Urasawa's Monster. It has all the makings of a high-end live-action television show, except it's not an edgy piece of shit or some kind of subver subversive crap hole of modernistic writing. It's actually pretty good in terms of the way it's written, in terms of the characters, the variety of them, the way some of them are dark, some of them are light-hearted, they all have some sense of realism to them, and they all have some sense that's, yeah, this is obviously a television show. It's well-written, it's interesting. A lot of people don't like the arc in the middle because it's slower and nothing really happens. All I do agree that the beginning and the end really pick, puts things up when so many things are being revealed. But I actually like the part in the middle because, to be perfectly honest, there were a lot of moments in the middle that were slow, yes, but I do like the slowness. I like when characters pretty much let you know who they are as opposed to just getting into the action and all that minimalistic crap. Number two would be Trigun. Now, I heard that the manga was much better, but it's a lot longer, and it pretty much just tells the same story, just more fleshed out. And the anime is was running while in the midst of the manga run. I don't even think it was halfway done. So, in general, the anime tells a very insular 26 episode sparks note version of that not even sparks note it just has a much more insular storyline and number three would be chobits i really liked chobits and the character interplay and the way the story wraps itself up in the beginning now the beginning of chobits was i'd say I was kind of mixed on it because it did seem like it was going to go an etchy direction even though it was so much smarter and had so much better writing. But no, it was a great anime from beginning all the way to end and I loved it. I almost uh, broke out in tears towards the end. And the ending for the anime version is much better than the ending for the original source material in the manga because they were written by the same people and the person who wrote the manga said, let me write a more specific, more fleshed out ending that does it justice. Favorite video games? For the most part, these are all going to be Square Enix games. Xenogears, Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy 7. That's the works right there. Now, Xenosaga Episode 1, The Rollers Are Mocked, or The Will to Power, that's pretty cool too. And I do love me some Mega Man X. That much, I can't deny. Now, when did you first discover alternative rights? I first discovered Alternative right while I was in ANCAP in the year 2012. I wasn't fully committed to it, not because of ideological constraints, because I was at that shitty Arenaism level where 
you can be an ANCAP libertarian and still count as alternative right. An alternative right back then was less defined than it was 2014 and onwards. But yeah, I was into it then. I became more committed to it towards the tail end of December when I was more concerned with the ending of Swippledom than I was any ANCAP ideal. So what kind of political beliefs do I hold? Pretty much, I'm going to explain the LARPier side first. I am an Arianist and an Edenist. The reason for this is because I understand that every civilization needs its own people to function to be that civilization that it is. The people are everything. You replace them with a different group, it's a different place. The nation is essential property. Although I'm more avoidant of that term because nationalism also comes with its own problems. The point is, I'm not some all nations party, renaissance party of North America type LARPer, right? I'm not going to be pan secessionist. I want some other way of making sure that Western civilization keeps its white essence and in general that not just Western civilization but everywhere in the world where there are Aryans or whites I'm not going to use those terms interchangeably all the time that those places are still popping like for example, why are we siding with the Sunnis instead of Shia? I mean, they have their caste where the top is pretty much white, and that's something that's truthful for a lot of places in the East. So there's that, but in terms of just my regular political beliefs, I'm red-pilled on race because obviously they exist, and Obviously, it is important to take that into consideration when talking about the issues of the West, especially with our immigration issues and things of that nature. And I'm also red-pilled on, obviously, the Jewish question, which, because of the next question, I will get into for those very same reasons. And more, po more so, I'm red-pilled on the women question because I don't know what term for that is what we're dealing with isn't a problem of white genocide which is something I have to keep explaining to white nationalists we're dealing with a problem of white suicide and that is a tremendous issue like white women and pretty much a lot of other factors, feminism in general, that's largely responsible for the fact that we're a nation of mostly single people, that we have a below replacement reproduction rate, and that's going to be nastier than any foreign assailants or anything else of that nature, because we're doing it to ourselves now. And a good deal of being red pill on the women question is that we can rectify all the problems that's starting that below replacement reproduction rate all the voting for policies that are dysgenic and many of them have nothing to do with the Jewish question or anything of that nature and many of them do but you need those three. In general, I will tell you what my ideal form of government is versus what I think is the best form of government, but that might be for a next video. Okay, opinions on the Jewish question. I'm wary of all Semites, but in general, the Jews have the best memes, and I'm not talking about internet memes or memes. I'm talking about 
ideas that they spread and they do have the highest IQ which obviously goes hand in hand with making the most dangerous of memes but in general Semites in general are all not all of them but enough to make a claim like this iconoclastic they're iconoclasts it's like taking other people's culture and things that they don't agree with and they like smashing them now Jews have a higher time preference so unlike maybe the Arabs or northern Africans they actually take the time to plan these things out yeah, the Moors, I mean, they take their time to plan these things out, and they do it accordingly. They convince us to smash their own cultural things that they don't agree with. And that is one reason why you should be very wary of them. But in general, I'm not completely anti-Semitic, because we need the Aryan and the Semite. Without the semi and too much Arianism, we will become materialists. If you notice a lot of Arianists and neo Hitlerists, they hold religious beliefs and ideas of that nature, but you can tell they don't really sincerely believe in them. They're just using them as thought memes to propagate their own ideology. And too much materialism is a bad thing. Whereas too much Semitism and you get you get bigotry. You get a culture that likes to thaw police, which is something we definitely have right now because of the Jews and because of the Swipples, and we get Freaking, and we get. Hmm. I'm trying to think what else we get besides stop policing. And we get iconoclasm in general. That's a problem that exists right now, and it's really shady. And what blogs do I read? I don't read any political blogs whatsoever. I don't even watch political YouTube videos. Hell, I don't even watch most of my own YouTube videos unless someone posts a comment. Or if I'm trying to check for any quality problems. But yeah, that's about it. I don't... I don't read anything and read Return of Kings. I don't read... I honestly don't even read TRS that much. Unless someone sends me their blog posts on my inbox I would advise people to start reading books instead because that's going to improve your reading level it's going to take you from a sixth grade reading level to something a lot higher don't read any of these books that you might find in a bookstore because yeah they're all on a sixth grade reading level for the most part Try to get something with actual quality that's going to help you become red-pilled or develop a decent LARP. That's my advice from me to you. And in general, you want to stick away from the blogs because you don't want to get your political views from neats like me. Because I've noticed my videos from 2013, 2014, and some of the memes that I spreaded were a little bit on the toxic side. But that's another story for another video. Now, have I met any other TRS members? I had the opportunity six days ago, or seven days ago actually, to meet with Ghoul and Seventh Son. But in general, I already met with Michael Enoch. We hung out once. And 
I do hang out with people outside of that outside of that TRS zone, but are like closely attached to it. I've hung out hung out with a couple of weirder personalities, more fringy type guys. We hold on to views that would get you guys shook, but yeah, I do have a fairly TRS social life. It would be nice if I could hang out with them on some other time, some other potential future. But I miss my opportunity, not because of a mistake of my own, but because of a bunch of other things I do not want to get into right now. But yeah, Michael Enoch, and I've actually had Ghoul in some of my Let's Play videos, guest commentating. So there's that. Anyway, opinions on Gamergate. Now, this is a topic that I always found kind of anemic, but I know more of it now than I do before. I like the fact that they're targeting swipple bitches who are trying to get a trying to get money from from talking about gaming and trying to badly talk about it too. Now I know that she has like a Anita Sarkeesian has like a series of documentaries about bad video game tropes and how. They pretty much turn everyone into shit lords. My thoughts on that are pretty simple. I don't like, in general, when feminists complain about women characters being damsels in distress or not creative enough. Because there are so many variety of female characters nowadays. But if it doesn't satisfy your special snowflake palette, then they complain about it. I do think there is a problem with the damsel and the stress character, and let me explain what it is. Dudes nowadays cannot have a story where they're just being bros, and they're engaging in heroism or trying to find meaning in life. Most of the time, if dudes are supposed to be looked at as heroes is if they're saving a chick. So that's my problem with the damsel and it's distressing. I'd say that it pretty much devalues everyone, not just the chicks. But even then, that's only a problem because it's done too much and it's done in substitute of other things like, for example, Final Fantasy XV. That has an all-male cast, and people complain about that shit. The feminists were complaining about the fact that the character Sydney was overly sexualized, and uh, Luna doesn't look like she has an active role. She might be a damsel in distress, based on the dialogue we hear. But I'm thinking, well, okay, but people are already complaining about the fact that you have an all-male party. And they're pretty much just being bros and engaging in a bromance. That's something that people will complain about too. So in general, yeah, there are a lot of problems with character memes nowadays. I mean, if you look at a lot of older movies, like maybe The Thing, they had all male casts and nobody was complaining. We can't have that nowadays. But we're about to get an all-female Ghostbusters, and yes, people are complaining about that too. And it's mostly from a nostalgia perspective, since Ghostbusters, along with Back to the Future and Karate Kid, those were the 80s movies. But in general, I need to start watching those movies before I make any claims of that nature. So yeah, I don't... If 2016 starts looking like a year where all chicks have special snowflake, super interesting personalities, and 
dudes eventually have to rectify with that and start going special snowflake in their own direction. That might just seem awkward to me. Now, I like unique characters, but if they're unique for the sake of being unique, which is the very nature of being a special snowflake, it's superficial, it's cosmetic, and that might become a problem. But that's just one side on the Gamergate thing. There's also the fact that there's a lot of shitty Kickstarters nowadays, and pretty much... Not just from feminists, but a lot of the gaming scene is all about trying to make money off your hobby in any means possible. Now, in the years of 2010, 2011, you could pretty much just start a blip TV or YouTube, become a partner or whatever, start making money that way, start making money through ads, start making money through... Maybe microblogs. And with the number of clicks you'd get, you would make some steady guap. But nowadays, that's no longer viable, and people are using Kickstarters or Patreons, actually. Patreons, to be more specific, to make their incomes. Less players are doing this, like, the more higher-end Let's Players. And a lot of people were bothered by it, because, yeah... We were pretty much tossing a hat for something that's essentially a hobby. And, you know me, I do Let's Plays. But I'm not tossing a hat around. And it's not like I'm in a position in life where I don't need it and that's why I don't do it. No, I got some difficult financial woes, but, you know... I don't see that as moral or not that they don't see it as moral either maybe they do maybe they don't but it does kind of seem weird and anachronistic that something like this exists moreover a lot of people are complaining about steam and valve in general because Steam can find a way to make money while the publishers and the hackers they get some problems of their own. I'm not going to get into that, but yeah, I don't really like Steam in general because I'm a Mac user and let me just say it's personal. I wanted to play so many games on Steam that are only available for Windows and there's no way I'm going in all windows right now so I got my steam around May of 2014 I deleted it on the same day so yeah I really can't stand steam but you know what there are a lot of issues that Gamergate complains on it's not just feminism it's pretty much a lot of things that's all I have to say for this Q&A. Let me see how long this video has been. It's been 24 minutes. It's pretty much to be expected. Anyway, I'm probably going to upload this video sometime in the future. Earlier today. This has been your boy, Mr. Walker 7 And Uxay, I'm a Day.